Let's bow. Across. Across. We just sit bow the cross. God is good and all the time. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You are set to heal and contrite. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be Our response to the Lord's word is, Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the works of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? 
or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for, blood, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be lucid in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. You know, our daily routine is filled with questions. What do we need from the grocery store? What's for supper? Hey, what movie are we going to watch tonight? Now, during these difficult times, we ask a new category of questions. How will the kids adapt to their online classes? Did you wear your mask today when you went to the store? Now, they're not the questions that we would have asked before the pandemic. But now they too have become part of our routine. And there are even bigger questions that carry an extra weight. <clears throat> With the reopening of schools, will our kids be safe? How's our finances holding up? When will we finally get a vaccine? These questions have been with us for many months and are now being asked with an extra importance because they reveal our social differences and tensions. When can we reopen? How long must we wait? Some questions carry very little weight or are, are, excuse me, are unimportant. Others challenge us to make decisions for our future and commitments. 
What's your plans now that you've graduated from high school or college? Will you marry me? In our gospel reading today, Jesus decides it's time to ask his disciples a very important question. Who do people say that the Son of Man is? Their answers reflect how important people thought that he was. Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Then he asked a more direct question. Who do you say that I am? It's not what other people say about Jesus. It's what we say. Peter is the one who replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Physical locations are important in gospel stories. <clears throat> Jesus takes his disciples about 25 miles north of the Sea of Galilee to a pagan Greco-Roman city called Caesarea Philippi. Considered by the Jews to be off limits. They consider it a sin city. In the city is a massive wall rock. And it's about 100 feet high 500 feet wide, big rock. And at its base was a temple built by King Herod the Great to honor Caesar Augustus, who considered himself to be a, a god. The people also built shrines and they carved out niches into that stone wall to place statues of their gods for worship. It was near that massive rock that displayed the power of the Roman Empire and pagan beliefs that Jesus names another rock. The question Jesus asked his disciples is also asked of each and every one of us. Not just once, but throughout our lives. But who do you say that I am. Our answer depends on the different stages of our life and on the circumstances in which we live in at the particular time. And it comes not only in words, but also in our actions. Jesus' question challenges us, especially today, during all these trying times that we have, to, to answer to the many problems in our world. Not just in words, but by ch the changing of our thinking and behavior through faith and through our love. Or to put it in another way, Jesus is again asking his community of believers, but who do you say now that I am? now in your life, this very moment, and future moments, who do you say that I am? Our answer must, not, must be worked out in the social, economic, and political, and religious world that we live in. Like the disciples standing near that massive rock of pagan worship, the answer to Jesus' challenge shapes our directions our responses to all the other major questions that's put to us by our by the life that's put to us by life by our life today through peter's example he gives us confidence like us he didn't always get things right <clears throat> he re resisted Jesus' prediction of his passion. And Jesus tells him, get behind me, Satan. At Jesus' arrest, he denies him, not once, not twice, but three times. 
It's not just a question about Jesus. It's also a question about us. Who am I? What do I believe? On what rock have I chosen to stand? The rock that Jesus builds his church on isn't Peter. It's his faith expressed in his answer. Faith is the foundation of the church. Another interpretation is that when Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church, he's referring to himself. Jesus is the stone rejected by the builder that has become the cornerstone. Not only the cornerstone of the church, but the cornerstone of our faith and our love. Jesus didn't give Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven based on his intelligence or any special qualifications. He was a fisherman. His ability was his knowledge of Jesus and his profession of faith. Jesus appointed Peter for his help, for his loyalty, for his love and service to a friend. And that is what Jesus does for us. He enlists or recruits a friend, actually a community of friends, the church, which we are part of. We make up the church to love him and to serve those to whom he sends to us sends to us through our daily routine. The called community was formed by the earthly Jesus to continue his work. It focuses on Jesus' identity and authority, not on Peter's. The church is not simply about the future world, but about being a sign of the kingdom the kingdom's presence here and now through us. As Jesus proclaimed, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus' question, who do you say that I am, defines who we are by how we live, what we do, and who we become in our life. Our answers will, of course, unite us more deeply to Jesus and in turn unite us more closely to one another so that we will not only give an individual but a communal witness to Christ. We are called to be a major influence in our life or in our world based on our faith and of our love so that others might be moved to ask us important questions too. Like, who do you say Jesus is? What does he mean to you? May we now arise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. 
He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now offer our prayers and our petitions to the Lord. For all people of faith, that may we show God's love to one another each day as we reach out to those most in need, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For world peace and end to violence, for those suffering from natural disasters in the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our priests, deacons, seminarians, religious, and those considering religious vocation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are physically or emotionally sick, for caregivers, and all who are helping to end the coronavirus epidemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and neglected, for those who live in fear, for social workers and all who share with those in need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, our sister parish, our beloved dead, and all requesting our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Carol Voisom, for whom this Mass is celebrated, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now turn to the intercession of our dear Mother Mary as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thou womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to be right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her the fullness of charity. Together, Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Ambrose, and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the same peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. To receive communion, please remain in your seat until an usher releases your row to go up for communion. Please maintain social distancing while you are in line, using the tape marks on the floor to space yourselves out. When it is your turn to receive the host, stay six feet back on the front tape line until the priest says the body of Christ. 
Then you say, Amen, with your mask still covering your nose and mouth. Step forward with your hands, one under the other, to receive the host. Step to the side. Pull your mask up from the bottom to uncover your mouth to consume the host. Then return to your seat. Note that you are to keep your nose and mouth covered except when consuming the host. Thank you.
Our announcements. This is Food and Lift Weekend. The hall shall be open Sunday from 9 a.m. to noon. Reminder, all are welcome to attend weekly mass on Fridays at 9.15 a.m. in the church. Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament follows. Father Albert will be celebrating these masses. Have a very blessed week. For dismissal, the priest and deacon will recess as usual. Please remain in your seat until an usher releases your robe to exit. This will begin from the rear. Please maintain social distancing as you exit the building. Please do not gather in groups outside. Thank you. Let us pray. Complete within us, O oh Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless and protect you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Master said, go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed week.